what we have here in front of us today is the key fob for a Citroen Bilingo. This key fob was sent in to us by a customer who has stated that it is no longer working. So when he presses the buttons, there is nothing happening for him at all whatsoever. I have actually placed a new battery into this key fob and I have also tested it myself and I can confirm his results are correct, meaning that this key fob is no longer functioning. So I want to talk to you now about the way that I tested it. There is a tool here that I have in front of me which is called an RF frequency tester and it is used to measure the RF frequency that is being emitted by a car key fob it measures within a certain frequency range um, but it does cover most of the key fobs that are available out there at the moment so this can be purchased from uh, AliExpress and I'll leave the links for you down below if, you, if you're into this sort of work this will really help you to um, diagnose and, and uh, fix a lot of the key fobs that come in for repair so the way it works is you press it on the side here there's a power button that we press okay and it's on so that shows that it's on and then what you do is you get your key fob and you place it in this region here around about here and you press the button okay and as you can see there's nothing coming off this one at the moment so there's no um, there's no output being displayed on the uh, frequency tester so we can confirm that this fob is not functioning correctly so what we're going to do now is we're going to take out the main PCB inside and we're going to give it a little inspection and uh, I'm going to discuss that with you now okay so I have taken the key fob apart and this is the PCB that is located inside and uh, as you can see it's got various components on it so let's move over to the microscope and let's discuss what's going on here and um, what we've found so far you can see that and there's the back side for you let's start with the front of the key fob if you have a look on the top here we have one micro switch and we have a capacitor next to it and then there are another two components underneath here the orange one and the white one we've got another two capacitors here we have a resistor here and we have another micro switch here so what I did was I changed out these two micro switches just in case it was just something to do with the switches um, to more modern ones um, because it's a common problem that these switches fail on these key fobs but that actually had no effect and uh, I still wasn't getting any kind of RF output from this fob so what I did next was I'm just going to um, explain everything to you just to make the video a bit quicker and in the future we can test stuff manually. What I want to do is I want to have a system where I can have the output from the multimeter displayed on the screen and I don't have that at the moment. So I'm just going to explain to you when, when, I, when I do have that then what I can do is um, I can do testing live and I can show you what the results are on the screen as we do it. But for now I'm just for this, for this video I'm just going to explain to you basically what I did. So I installed the new switches and I tested it there was still no RF output. Then I tested this uh, capacitor here there's no short here. Uh, the readings seem fine. I also tested this one here. This capacitor here, there's there's no issues with that one. These components, there wasn't anything that overly stood out to me between um, regarding these two components. There's nothing burnt on the board. There was no d damage signs or anything like that. I tested these two capacitors here. There's no shorts on them. They seem fine. This resistor here, I took it off the board and I tested it. And I tested it in circuit as well and uh, it seems fine it's within spec and there's no issues here so that's all there is to the front of the board now if we turn the board around right, let's turn the board around so we're going to test the board around now and we're going to go around to the back that's what it looks like from the back and i'm going to bring that underneath the microscope here so let's start from here now if you start from okay let's start from here there's a it's like an a circuit for the for the aerial for the RF and that has two capacitors which are based here and here and these two capacitors I tested them there's no shorts on them they seem fine then what would then what you have here 
is you have a resistor here which is on the uh, the aerial circuit uh, this resistor I measured it in circuit I also took it out and it's within spec so there's no issues with this resistor um, this capacitor here seems fine this one here is also fine as well it's within spec and that's basically all we have on the on the back of the PCB now there are two ICs here on the back of this PCB and I did some research on these and from the research what I found is that this one here is some kind of IC that stores the codes and from the bit of research that I did was that the code can be burnt into this one time only and um, and that's about it so for this I would assume that you would need a programmer to program the code in but this one here um, what I found was this is an RF controller so this is the main controller of the board and this controls the RF output signal and also this, uh, the buttons when you press them on the on the other side all the, the inputs of that come into here and this is basically the brains of the key fob so I've done some research online if you have a look here the code on this IC is 7507 and the code on this one is 66406 now we're not interested in this one we're just interested in this one at the moment I did research both of, both of them but this is the interesting one which I want to discuss with you and uh, I'm going to move over to the PC now and I'm going to show you what I found when I'd researched this chip here so let's move over to the PC and we'll take it from there right we've moved over to the PC now and as I was saying I did some research on this chip this uh, 7507 chip IC and I found uh, I found a thread on EV blog discussing this exact IC apparently this IC is quite problematic and other people have also had issues with this particular IC so there's somebody here who's uh, mentioning this chip and he says look you know I found this chip and um, is anybody able to identify it I believe it's an RF output amp and he's mentioning some of the uh, the outputs that he had of some of the pins so he says that uh, after pin 2 I had a signal in pin 4 was a ground pin 7 was 12k to ground, pin 10 and 11 were a loop for the antenna and pin 12 was a plus 3 volts and somebody else chimes, chimes in and they basically mention that um, it's, I doubt it's an amp, it could be a microcontroller for the RF circuitry built in to the fob um, and then it goes on and on and on and uh, then somebody else posted uh, uh, a similar chip here and he says the the output lines on the pins they match so it could be a similar chip so I'll leave that up here for you anyway you can look into that when you've got some time and you can read all of the different outputs on here um, and then when we get to the bottom of this thread the crux of it is is that somebody called Morda he mentioned that I ordered these 7507 chips from Aliexpress and they work fine thank you for any help so the conclusion is that somebody else was having issues with this particular fob and by replacing this chip they were able to solve the problem so I'm gonna go with that and uh, I'm going to try and replace that chip and see if it solves our problem as well that's the hunch that I'm gonna go with okay let's move back over to the microscope and let's take it from there right so I've managed to hunt down this IC this problematic IC I found them on Aliexpress as you can see here 7507 and we are going to attempt to replace this IC and see if it fixes our problem this is how it looks from the front and uh, this is how it looks from the back so here goes I have now secured the PCB in the PCB holder and I'm going to apply a little bit of flux just to help the solder melt and uh, I'm going to heat it up with a heat gun and attempt to remove it so what we'll do is we'll put a little dot on the PCB to help us remember where pin 1 is supposed to be so here goes so we'll leave that there and that tells us basically that pin 1 should be in that corner right I'm gonna set the temperature to 400 and I'm going to set the wind speed to 
40 and uh, let's take it from there right well that chip came off quite easily what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply some flux to the solder pads and uh, I'm just going to clean them up and ap apply some fresh solder onto them and the solder that I'm going to be using today is uh, 6040 Okay, so we've managed to remove the IC and apply some fresh solder onto the pads. And what I'm going to be using to clean it up is some isopropyl alcohol. So I'm going to take a Q-tip, I'm going to dip it into some isopropyl alcohol, and I'm going to proceed to clean all of this up. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to install the new IC that we've got here. We're going to apply some fresh flux to the board. And we should be able to sit the IC on top. That should be good enough. And there we have it, all done. We shall now clean it all up and proceed to the testing. We have the controller installed back onto the PCB and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to test each pin individually to make sure that it's made a solid contact. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. What we'll do now is we'll install it back into the fob and uh, we'll take it back to the RF tester and see if we had any success. Okay, so we've put our PCB back into our key fob and we are now going to test it on the frequency tester and find out if the job was successful or not. So here goes. So we've got it here and we're going to press the buttons and see what happens. So let's press the first button here, 433.8, so we can confirm the bottom button works and we shall now press the top button and the top button works as well. Fantastic. Another job, well done. Well. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to like and subscribe and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now and have a nice day.